Good morning and welcome to the First Congregational Church of Chickadee where everyone is welcome no matter who you are or where you are on life's journey. Um, we have some announcements this morning. So today for the first time uh, in, in a while, it's going to be Regina's Food Pantry is going to be open. It's going to be open now every Sunday between the hours of 5 and 6.30. And we've gotten a lot of more food. So we now have some um, fresh vegetables, fresh fruit, carrots, apples, um, and other items. We also have meat and we have frozen turkeys, chickens, ham, um, and that will change on a weekly basis depending on what's available when we go to pick up the food. We ask that if you have any need at all, um, and it doesn't need to be that your pantry's completely empty, it just could be you're having a difficult time right now, because of um, work and how many hours or how much you're making, please come, it's available, it's for everyone in the community. Don't have to be a member of the church. You just have a need, come and, and no questions are asked. We'll have a, a sheet that you'll be able to check off what you want. You can't come into the church, can't come into the pantry. We ask that you drive through, you'll see the people waiting. Um, fill out this sheet, we'll, we'll fill it up. We also have pasta, um, spaghetti sauce, we have macaroni and cheese, tuna fish, canned chicken, vegetables, we have more, uh, breakfast cereals, um, what you may need, whatever it is, please come, um, it's there for everyone. Um, also on February 7th and going forward from there, breaking bread with the community will be open. We'll now be having two meals a month. On the first and third Sundays of the month, We'll be providing, and right now, because of COVID restrictions, they are curbside pickup. We ask that you come in and uh, just follow the directions in the parking lot. The first stop would be Regina's Pantry, anybody that needs that, and then the second stop would be to get your meals. No questions how many meals you need. Um, there's no charge. Donations are always welcome, but um, there's no charge for those items. And the church, we're moving forward in this COVID restriction. I think that you all are doing a great job and so doesn't Governor Bakers think the same thing. They're easing up restrictions a little bit, not very much, but a little bit, because we did such a good job in the Christmas that we didn't see the complete Christmas surge. Hospitalizations are now down. Keep up the good work of wearing a mask, keeping socially distant, washing your hands, and be safe until we can get through this pandemic. And eventually we may be back worshiping um, in this building sooner than later, um, depending on how well we abide um, by what God has provided us to fight this pandemic and, uh, and keeping safe. And the vaccines are coming open. I heard last night on the news in Massachusetts, phase two should start by the end of February. That came from one of the CEOs or, or a chief medical officer of one of the hospitals. So we're moving forward um, and we're staying safe. Protect your neighbors, protect yourself, protect your families um, and going forward. So let's leave everything behind that we carry on our shoulders throughout the week and prepare to worship God together. So let us come together in the spirit of prayer. From deep within us, we know of a loving presence. All around us, we see glory, beauty, life, and light. We have no words for what we experience, so we cry out, God, in this moment of worship, may that loving presence grow deeper. May our awareness of the divine presence around us grow more intense. And may we gather in this place, learn to pay more attention to God, who loves us at all times in all places. Amen. Come, let us worship the Lord together.
Christ is calling you as disciples. Lord Jesus, let us follow you faithfully. You will be led into fields of mission and service. Lord Jesus, where you lead us, we will go. Listen for Christ's call to you. We are ready to serve the Lord. Amen. And now in one voice, let us offer up our prayer of invocation. Holy One, God of all creation, you call us to be your people, to carry your vision in this time and place, to go where you need or send us to help, welcome your amazing good news as we gather in your presence of the risen Christ to spread the news that your realm is near. Fill us with your Holy Spirit, O God of all creation. Fill us with your glorious spirit that we may share your good news with the world in need. Amen. Our hymn of praise this morning is Lord of the Dance. We trust that the Holy One is interested in us, interested in our minds and our hearts and souls. We trust that God's mercy and grace are intended for us too. With faith and, faith and trust, let us make our confession to God first aloud and then in silent prayer as we pray our prayer of confession. Holy One, what a blessing and privilege we share here in this sacred space and among this loving community. But like Jonah, we sometimes are jealous of what we share here. We know that others are longing and thirsting for what we know and experience. Forgive us our reluctance to open our doors 
open our hearts to others. Some like us, some not. We repent of our hesitations and unwillingness to witness to those we have considered strangers and even enemies for fear they just might become friends. The one who calls us to this place calls us to reconciliation through grace. God will not deny a repentant heart or an open spirit. Know that you are forgiven and walk in the new way that is made known to you in God's love. Amen. And now with one voice, let us offer up the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father who art in heaven. Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. And so now to the children who some have read this story and some haven't, but we're going to use part of the story today. But it's a story about Jonah and Jonah who God had called. And just like Jonah, God calls all of us to become a servant, not just to God, but to our neighbors. And sometimes we know that's not easy because we have friends and we like our friends and we like to do things with our friends, but not everybody are what, who we call friends. And sometimes it's harder to do things with those that we don't consider our friends than those that are our friends. Jonah had a hard time. He ran away from God like most of us do. And you guys are really little and maybe haven't been running, but um, when you realize God talking to you, sometimes we just kind of not listen to it because God tells us sometimes to do things that we may not want to do. But Jonah kind of ran away, but God um, kept running after Jonah and God finally caught up to Jonah. And then there was a storm and Jonah was on a ship and they threw him overboard and a whale swallowed him. And then the whale brought him to shore and put him on the shore and it's, it's a fun story. So we'll read it sometime together all about Jonah. But what's important to know is that sometimes God's talking to you and you just kind of don't want to listen to what God's saying. And the adults that are here do the same thing more often than you guys probably. Because you guys are easier to um, forgive others than sometimes adults are. But just remember that when you are with people that you may not particularly like, that's okay. Because you can love someone without liking them and that's what's really important to do. So think about what it is that God's saying to each and one of you as you go forward. And it's a lot harder because you're doing school at home, online, and you're not seeing all sorts of people. But no, pretty soon, and it may be sometime this summer, we may get back to doing it. And I heard a rumor that maybe Chickabee will be coming back to school um, like it was in, within the next couple months. So you're gonna run into people you haven't seen for a long time. And people that you may not um, have missed very much, but know that God wants you to be with them um, as much as the ones, the people that you like. So can we come together in prayer? 
So dear God, help us to love everyone, not just those that are like us and not just those that we like. Help us, God, to hear what it is you're saying to us and help us to do what it is you're asking us to do. And we ask all this in Jesus' name. Amen. And so now we come to our time of sharing. It's a time of sharing our joys and our concerns. So let us prepare to come together in the spirit of prayer. prepare to come together in a time of prayer. Oh God, let's be honest in this moment so that we aren't wasting anybody's time. Let's be honest about the worst of who we are. Honest with ourselves, honest with each other, and honest with you. Let us be honest about our apathy, our shame, our obsessions and addictions, our self-harm, self-numbing, self-neglect. These ways surround us, cling to us, hover over us like a cloud not yet burned off by the morning sun. And so we own up to these ways. We hold them out in the light before you, before each other, and before ourselves. This is who we are. And so now let's again be honest in this moment so that we aren't wasting anybody's time. Let's be honest about the, way, the best of who we are honest with ourselves, honest with each other, and honest with you. Before we dare to claim these words about ourselves, we need to remind us that we are lovingly made in your image. We need to remind us that your wild and daring spirit is in our breath. We need you to remind us that Jesus' name came to us as flesh and blood, taking on the God with us because these lives and these bodies matter so very much. Let us be honest about our capacity to create and imagine. Let us be honest about our depth of empathy and compassion. Let us be honest about our deep love, burning passion, hearts for justice, care for our neighbors, abiding hope in a better day. Let's be honest about our eye for beauty as we notice a bloom a dew, a drop on a leaf, the smile of our love. Let's be honest about our ear for goodness as we hear the streetcars rumble by, as we cozy up on a quiet afternoon and listen to the rain falling around, as we delight in the laughter of children, as we weep at the beauty of a favorite song and dance barefoot in the kitchen, overcome by the righteousness of mo the moment. Oh God, let's be honest, we are all these things. We are sinners and saints. We are surrounded by clouds of both. We are harsh and we are beautiful. We are cruel and we are kind. We are ap apathetic and we are passionate. We can barely stand it, the complete complexity of this life. Be gracious with us, oh God. Remind us every day to be gracious with each other and with ourselves as we set out once again for the level paths to you. Today we pray for all of those who are sick, for the families we know that have come down with COVID, for those who are not feeling well, those, those who are struggling both with addictions 
and with themselves. We pray for all of those, over 400,000 who have died from this disease. Let us know that it is real. Let us know that it is dangerous. Let us know that we can beat it with your help. We give you thanks for so much. We give you thanks for the volunteers of this church. We give you thanks for breaking bread with the community, for Regina's pantry, for the food bank of Western Mass, and for all those who are serving those in need. Holy One, we've lifted the names of loved ones today in prayerful petition for God's healing love. We have uttered in our hearts names and situations that would break our hearts to speak. And God hears all our cries and responds in love. This is one of the faithful works of the church, the work of prayer, asking for God's healing mercy and blessings. As we have offered these prayers, let us also offer our lives, trusting in God's love and call to us, responding with confidence, for it is in the name of your Son, our Lord, our Savior, our friend Jesus, that we pray. Amen.
Good morning. Our first reading is from Jonah, chapter 3, verses 1 through 5 and 10. The word of the Lord came to Jonah a second time, saying, Get up and go to Nineveh, the great city, and proclaim it to the message that I tell you. So Jonah set out and went to Nineveh, according to the word of the Lord. Now Nineveh was an exceedingly large city, a three-day walk across. Jonah began to go to the city, going a day's walk, and he cried out, Forty days more, and Nineveh will be overthrown. And the people of Nineveh believed God. They proclaimed a fast, and everyone great and small put on a sackcloth. When the God saw what they did, how they turned from their evil ways, God changed his mind about the calamity that he said he would bring upon them, and he did not do it. This is the word of God. Our second reading is from 1 Corinthians chapter 7, verses 29 through 31. I mean, brothers and sisters, the appointed time has grown short. From now on, let those who have wives be as though they had none, and those who mourn as they were not mourning, and those who rejoice as though they were not rejoicing, and those who buy as though they had no possessions, and those who deal with the word as though as they had no dealings with it. For the present form of this world is passing away. God is still speaking. Um. with you throughout the service some of it's delayed so I want to also offer up in prayer for the rest of this service Matt and Cherokee who suffered a miscarriage um, this past week um, and I can only imagine what they're feeling but they should know that this congregation is with them as we go forward Almighty God in your hidden all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge Open our eyes that we may see the wonders of your word and give us grace that we may clearly understand and freely choose the way of your wisdom. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our gospel reading this morning comes from the gospel according to St. Mark chapter 1 verses 14 through 20. Now after John was arrested, Jesus came to Galilee proclaiming the good news of God and saying, The time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe in the good news. As Jesus passed along the Sea of Galilee, he saw Simon and his brother Andrew casting a net into the sea, for they were fishermen. And Jesus said to them, Follow me and I will make you fish for people. And immediately they left their nets and followed him. As he went a little farther, he saw James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John, who were in the boat mending the nets. Immediately he called them, and they left their father Zebedee in the boat with the hired men and followed him. This is the gospel of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. May your ears be open to hearing and your hearts to receiving. You know, sometimes we get called and we don't always listen to what it is we're hearing. I know some of you have known me for a while and know my story of what I was called, but when I was little, I was felt that I was called by God to serve. I didn't quite understand what it was God was asking me to do, although I was Catholic at the time and thought that I was being called to be a priest. 
I did a lot of work doing that. Alter server, then it was called Alter Boy. Um, paying attention, going to CCD. And then I got a little older. And I thought, no, that's not what God's really calling me to do. But it was maybe more that that's not what I wanted to do. <clears throat> but I pursued what it was that I was hearing. But God didn't give up, and I went and did many things. I went to college, I lived the life, I went into the army, I left the military, I went into business, and God never stopped calling. <coughs> Excuse me. Eventually I heard the call, much older and a few years ago, and entered into seminary, and I know God did certain things, and got me through seminary, got me called here, got me called to be a chaplain, and I'm serving and very happy. Today we hear the story of Jonah, but only a small part of that story. If you think about the whole story of what that was, Jonah was called by God and he ran away. He got on a ship, and was sailing away because he thought he could sail away and be away from God. But a storm came. And it's a story very similar to what we hear Jesus did. Jonah was down below sleeping. <coughs> and the men came to him and said, you know, pray to your God so that we can make it through this. And Jonah said, no, no, no. I think God is mad at me. You all need to pick me up and throw me overboard and you'll be okay. And they did that and a fish, not a whale, it says a fish, but if we put it as a whale, swallowed Jonah. For three days, Jonah's inside the whale and he eventually starts to pray. And God has the fish throw him up onto the shore. And again, God calls him to go to Nineveh. And Jonah goes to Nineveh. And he tells the people of Nineveh, <clears throat> which was in the place of what was Assyria, hey, you dudes are really bad. In 40 days, God's going to destroy you. And the king of Nineveh believed him and put on sack clothes and sat in ashes and said, we need not be bad anymore. We need to be good. And they became good. And God said, wow, I'm not going to destroy you. Now, Jonah got mad because God didn't destroy Nineveh. And he went out into the desert, and he built a house, and God made a, a bush come up over him and gave him um, comfort. And he had kind of an argument with God, saying, you know, you said you're gonna destroy Nineveh, and God said, well, look, we, I gave you grace. Can't I give the people of Nineveh grace? And anyway, Jonah was angry, and he was jealous of what it was. He thought his call was important and it should have came through, but it had a happy ending. Jonah is a distinct or a prophet book because it's a narrative, it's a story about the prophet, not about a bunch of prophetic utterances like Isaiah and Jeremiah and Hosea. It was a story that shows the human response to the call from God. It wasn't focusing on the causes of the call, like Jeremiah and Moses. Jonah initially tries to run away from God. I know Isaiah makes excuses and Moses makes excuses, but Jonah actually runs away. But eventually Jonah consents to what it is that God's calling him to do. And he delivers the message to the people but his message doesn't come true because the people repent. And unlike the other prophets who issue the call to repent and return, Jonah delivers this uncompromising call of impending doom that never comes true. And it becomes Jonah the one that the story calls back to. Today we also hear about the call of the disciples See, Mark has established in the beginning of his gospel exactly who Jesus is, exactly what Jesus is doing. And today we find out that once John is arrested, then Jesus' ministry begins. 
And even Jesus kind of talks like John was. He says, repent and believe in the good news. Sometimes that good news is good news for some and not good news for others because the others are focused in a different direction. What Jesus was calling for was good news to the people, but maybe not so good news to Herod and Pontius Pilate and Rome because they were focused on other things, focused on the state, focused on money, focused on riches, focused on power. But see, repentance doesn't mean fall on your knees. We've talked about this and say, oh my gosh, I've sinned. Help me. Repentance calls for a transformation to transform your focus. We repent, which means we are leaving what was and are coming to what is. Jesus says in some translations, I'll make you fishers of men, fishers of humans, fishers of people. But this fishing that Jesus is calling us to do is a revolution. But it's a different revolution. It's not like the revolution that attempted to start on Capitol Hill. It's a different revolution. It's not storming buildings or using violence. It's a different revolution. It's a revolution of providing food and housing and clothing and vaccines and truth. But it's not only called to those who don't have, because if you read today's gospel, we see that two of them, the sons of Zebedee, were kind of rich. They weren't fishermen like other fishermen. They had employees. They had an inheritance that they could have gotten an earthly inheritance and money. And yet Jesus called them and they immediately left. Jesus called probably to all of them that were sitting there and only two of them left. But some of the first disciples that came were disciples that were coming from privilege. They had a choice to make. As humans, we usually make bad choices. I know that I minister to people who have gotten disease because of smoking and they have a choice to live better or to continue to smoke. And they consider to continue to smoke. And sometimes we have addictions and we have the choice to leave those addictions. But yet we choose to, to remain addicted. Not that it's easy to break off an addiction. But we have bad habits. We have ways that we are. And we choose to live in the present without looking to what is in the future. See, like Jonah, God calls us, though, to coexist. God wasn't calling Jonah to destroy Nineveh, but to give a message, a message of repentance. See, Jonah and Assyria, you could come to modern day and compare to South Africa and apartheid. Even though things changed, even though there was a resistance, the change occurred. And that experiment that's been running seems to be doing and getting better day by day. It's not perfect yet. Just like our government isn't perfect yet some 270 years after it was established. But Nineveh stopped their evil ways. They repented and transformed. They were saved, not by something God did, but by something they did. They transformed. They show us hope that there's a chance for us to transform, a chance for us to become better. We live in a system of privilege, in a system of domination, in a system of power. We live in a choice that we need to make 
to either make things better or to stay the way we are. These days we live in a lot of anger. There's anger on both sides. And the transformation needs to be to forget that anger and to come together. See, there has to be accountability, yes, in order for transformation to occur. But there also has to be love to those who are trying to transform, to those who we're trying to get the message to. This can't be a we-they. When we live in a we-they, a win-lose situation, then we lose. You see, Jesus didn't only talk about the reign of God. Jesus enacted the reign of God. And Jesus has called us, just like he called those 12, to enact that reign of God here, to escort the kingdom of God down here on earth. See, transformation doesn't mean that we're going to be perfect. And transformation doesn't mean that we're going to get it on the first attempt. Transformation means that we're going to be in a continual process of transformation, just like South Africa is today, just like the United States is today since 1776. We're not perfect. We're not near perfect. None of us are perfect. But we need to repent. And in that repentance, in that transformation, we don't need to say, what about the other guy? We need to focus on what about us? Because when we focus on the other guy, then we don't see where our transformation needs to take place. We don't see where we need to be different. It's easy to be angry. And sometimes that anger is a good camouflage for our imperfections. Sometimes that anger is a good transform or camouflage for the fact that we know what we're doing is wrong. But we don't need to say, what about the other guy? We need to look at ourselves as well. We need to transform and heed the call of God. We need to provide for the hungry, for the homeless, for the naked, for the prisoners. And when we do that, we will transform our world into a better place to live. Amen. Attitude are a demonstration that a blessing or benefit has been received by us. That we heard a call. That we dropped our nets and came to this place to find new life. The gifts we give today, the gifts we give every day, are but tokens of the blessings of a new life that we live in Jesus. So bring your gifts with joy, for they remind us of just how blessed we are to know this love of God, this love that flows so generously from the Spirit of God. Let us give of our time, let us give of our talent, let us give of our treasure.
May these gifts given to these ministries of grace be a blessing to friends and strangers, those like us and those not, those deserving and those not, for in this way the love of God reaches all of God's beloved. Amen. <clears throat> As God calls people to the table of forgiveness, peace, and loving fellowship, First Congregational Church of Chicopee affirms an inclusive and open communion table. All persons, all ages, ethnicities, sexual orientations and identities, dis and abilities, religious affiliations, and other distinguishing features are welcome to partake of this sacrament, which affirms that we are all part of God's family and are all to commune together in sacred relationship. Love and peace are the uniting virtues of this spiritual meeting place. Therefore, all who wish to join in this ritual of unity are invited to do so, providing that you do so in the spirit of peace and mutual love for one another. Come, the table here in this building and the table at your home is ready and Jesus sits at the head and all are welcome, no matter who you are or where you are on life's journey. Today we remember that on the evening of his betrayal, Jesus took bread, he broke the bread, gave it to his disciples and said, take this, all of you, and eat from it. For this is my body which will be broken for you and for all of humankind. Each time you take of the common loaf, do so in remembrance, remembrance of me. We also recall that when supper had ended, he gave God thanks and praise. He took the cup, gave it to his disciples and said, take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the cup of the new covenant, the covenant of love, which will be poured out for you and for all of humankind. Each time you drink from the fruit of the vine, do so in remembrance of me. For this is the body, the body that calls each and every one of you to be disciples, disciples not only of Jesus, but disciples of love. Take and eat, and may you hunger no more. This is the cup of the new covenant. The covenant of love, which we need to pour out to each and every person in our community. Take and drink, and may you thirst no more. Thanksgiving. Let us celebrate our new life in Christ, giving thanks to God, our creator and sustainer. Let us come together in the spirit of prayer. Loving and gracious God, thank you for this holy meal, and thank you for Jesus and his all-inclusive love for humanity. 
and thank you for this day, which we worship and serve you. Amen. So it only goes to show that we aren't perfect because I forgot to sanctify this meal. But know one thing, that this meal that we share today is sanctified in the love. The love that we have for each other, the love we have for those who are not with us, and the love we have for God's creation. So we may not have said a prayer, but that love has come together and blessed this meal and blessed every meal that we'll have to know that it's being called us to community. Again, I want to remind you that Regina's Pantry is open today from 5 to 6.30 for a pickup. Um, and anytime you're in need of food, Regina's Pantry is only a phone call away at 413-592-0396. Call and say you're in need and we can have somebody down here at the church so that you can pick up what you need. This church never closes. It's open 24 hours a day. All you need to do is reach out. It's here, provided to you by God, and all you have to do is come and get take what you need. So our closing hymn, our hymn of journey today, is hymn number 602, I Have Decided to Follow Jesus. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. With thanksgiving, let us celebrate our new life in Christ, giving thanks to God, our creator and sustainer. Let us come together in the spirit of prayer. Loving and gracious God, thank you for this holy meal, and thank you for Jesus and his all-inclusive love for humanity. And thank you for this day, which we worship and serve you. Amen. So it only goes to show that we aren't perfect because I forgot to sanctify this meal. But know one thing, that this meal that we share today is sanctified in the love. The love that we have for each other, the love we have for those who are not with us, and the love we have for God's creation. So we may not have said a prayer, but that love has come together and blessed this meal and blessed every meal that we'll have to know that it's being called us to community. Again, I want to remind you that Regina's Pantry is open today from 5 to 6.30 for a pickup. Um, and anytime you're in need of food, Regina's Pantry is only a phone call away at 413-592-0396. Call and say you're in need, and we can have somebody down here at the church so that you can pick up what you need. This church never closes. It's open 24 hours a day. All you need to do is reach out. It's here, provided to you by God, and all you have to do is come and get take what you need. So our closing hymn, our hymn of journey today, is hymn number 602, I Have Decided to Follow Jesus. Thank mm -hmm. you.
Christ in your hearts and spirits. Feel the power of the Holy Spirit guiding your path. Know the love of God which is poured out for you and rejoice. Go in peace and may God's peace go with you. Amen.